from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. It's become like a common thing in the NHL for guys to fall in love with my sloppy seconds. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. I told you I was going to do it, and I've done it, and I've lived with it for a while, I must say... And it pains me to say it. it. Hasn't made much difference in my life. It hasn't. I wondered if it would. Knowing where my dad uh, worked most of his life. My dad worked for a newspaper for 43 years. Newspapers were in my house. Since the earliest days I can remember, the first words I ever read when I first showed that I knew how to read, they were not printed in a newspaper, but they were written in the margins alongside a newspaper column. I grew up around newspapers. Everybody does it. Every family was not in the habit of reading newspapers. When I was growing up. But we were a newspaper family. And I must say that uh, having grown up with newspapers around me, I thought that giving up the newspaper, that being the printed edition of the newspaper, would be difficult. That somehow I would. Uh, would miss it or wish I could go back to it or that I would ultimately break down and actually go back to it well I can report to you that that hasn't happened I cancelled my subscription to the Los Angeles Times not for the reasons that people sometimes cancel newspapers they don't like the editorial section or they disagree with something they read in the newspaper or they don't like the quality of the newspaper. You know, put simply, the newspaper consists of all the stuff I read on the Internet. Not even yesterday anymore. Now it's two days ago. With all the budget cutbacks at newspapers and with the speed with which I can get a story from the Associated Press, Reuters, UPI and any number of other wire services, newspapers, and magazines. The newspaper is an anachronism. It's a dinosaur. It's a dodo bird. I knew the newspaper was in trouble at my home when the papers were being delivered and I had them stacking up still wrapped in the twine or the plastic bag they came in. Stacks of papers. And the reason I wasn't opening the papers was not because I didn't have time to read them. The reason was every morning I would wake up and before I even got out of bed, I would pick up my BlackBerry, go to the LA Times mobile website, and I would read the paper online for free. And many of the articles that appeared on the BlackBerry version of the L.A. Times were not even in the printed edition yet. They would be in the next day or maybe two days later. So I would um, finish reading all the articles I was interested in. Then I would uh, get dressed, get out of bed, and uh, head up to my front door, and there would be the newspaper. And I'd look at the paper, and I'd think to myself, I just read it. So I would put it in the pile with the other newspapers I hadn't read. I guess I thought maybe I'd be going back. But even if you were going to go back and look at articles from previous newspapers, you could do that on your computer. The L.A. Times conveniently stores for you uh, the contents of the last seven days of the paper for no charge. You just go back and look back. There is no compelling reason in 
I'm going to say in Southern California, to read a newspaper. Now, I understand if you live in New York City or you work in Manhattan and you commute to Connecticut or Chicago or Boston and your uh, commute to work is on public transportation, that's a whole other world. But living in Los Angeles, where you can't read in the car anyway, what do you need a paper for? What for? I am better informed today than I've ever been. And now I don't get a print edition of the Los Angeles Times anymore. The Los Angeles Times, by the way, which at one time was one of America's great newspapers, is a, a shell of its former self. I've talked about it on the air numerous times just because that happens to be my local paper. It's turned into a pamphlet. Craigslist decimated the classified section. So if you ever read that, there's not much in there to look at anymore. And the newspaper um, just continues to deteriorate in quality and size. It's really, really sad. But by the same token, it's just another change that technology has brought. Because if it was that sad, I'd keep getting the paper and I'd refuse to read it on my telephone or my Blackberry or uh, to read it online. I would refuse. It was sad, I'm sure, as I've said on the air before, when the ice band stopped bringing that block of ice to stick in your ice box. It was sad when your friendly neighborhood grocer was put out of business by big supermarket chains like Alpha Beta. Or if you live back east, you know, like Pathmark. It was sad, but it didn't mean you didn't go. You know, a lot of changes have taken place. How many of you said goodbye to your landline? You know, I grew up, you had a telephone. It was wired into the wall. That's the way it worked. You didn't <laughs> not have a home telephone. 30% of all of us have gotten rid of the home phone. 30%. Within the next month, I am replacing my AT&T standard landline telephone. I'm replacing it with a VoIP phone. There will be no more landline service to call me at home. It's going away. I don't feel sad about it. And I'm going to save about 70 bucks a month after all the taxes are taken out. Do you know how much I pay in taxes on my telephone? Have you looked at a phone bill lately? You know, if you have a telephone, you have to pay a tax so that people who can't afford a telephone get a telephone. Oh, I tell you what, I'll do without a telephone. <laughs> then I don't have to pay the tax to help other people get a telephone. Stupid. Landline, gone. Record stores, gone. Newspapers, on the way out. Magazines, a lot of them gone. And uh, these are some of the changes we have. It's just the way things are. There are easier, faster ways of getting the news. Newspapers are labor-intensive, the method of getting the news to you is extremely inefficient when you think about it. Having somebody write a story, having somebody proofread a story, having somebody edit the story, fitting the story into columns, preparing the newspaper to go to press, printing out 800,000 copies, distributing them throughout the city. <laughs> yeah, The news is old by the time it gets to you. Too old. I can get news from the Internet and from TV. Sure. Did I love having the newspaper spread out around me on Sunday morning? You know what? I did. By now, I've read the Sunday paper before I get out of bed. I found other ways to spend my Sunday. So the newspaper is gone. It's gone. 
I've talked about this on the air more than once because uh, I've done without my paper. And I was very curious about how I would feel about it. And now I'm noticing that I I feel free. I'm free of having to uh, take the papers and put them out of the recycle bin. I'm free of having to call the newspaper every time I go out of town to have them stop the paper and then start up the paper and I come back. I'm free of having to pay for it. And that's the other thing. The L.A. Times recently raised its newsstand price to 75 cents an issue. You're kidding me, right? The whole newspaper is available for free online. Why would you pay 75 cents for it? And it's not just L.A., folks. It's all over the country. The same thing is happening. You have a problem with this? Tom like it. one 800 Five eight hundred Tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six 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 the Tom Likas Show. Like show. Like show. The Tom Likas Show now with less commercials, shorter commercial breaks. And more phone calls from you at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Van on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. It's Tom. Yes. Long, long time, first time. Uh-huh. Hey, buddy. Uh, I, I got I to gotta tell you, I cannot stand the papers piling up in my front yard. And I'm the only one that brings them in. And I end up throwing them away anyways. But my wife wants to get them because of the coupons. Which coupons? I, I wanted your opinion on how I can get coupons without ordering a damn paper. Here, you go to smartsource.com. Okay. There's okay. No, no space there. Smartsource.com. Smartsource, which is owned by News Corporation, which is the uh, company that brings you uh, Fox Television and the New York Post, uh, Smart Source uh, is the company that publishes the most well-known circular of coupons that appears in the Sunday paper. All those coupons that you see on Sunday in the Smart Source booklet also appear on the website. In fact, on the website, you can print out an unlimited number of those coupons rather than be limited to what's in the newspaper. Is there any fee on that? Any fee? Any what? Uh, any annual fee or anything No, like that? no, it's free. Okay, perfect. I mean, why pay for the paper if you can get the ads for free? Exactly. I'm so sick of the paper. We never read it. The first thing you do is you go online, you see the MSN page, you got all your news right there, whatever. Right. Um, now, like I say, these are the uh, grocery coupons. Uh, I don't know if your wife is looking for other kinds of coupons, like... Macy's coupons or so. Those are probably somewhere else, but the, the the grocery coupons are definitely available, all of them. Sweet, Tom. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Who needs a paper? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Trisha on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Um, I just wanted to say um, that I agree with you. Yeah, the newspapers are an archaic medium. I do, however, feel sad for the fact that people no longer read things because I think when you go online, you still sometimes find a lot of grammatical errors. And um, I actually normally work in journalism and, and uh, news media and that kind of thing. I majored in it. And um, I, I don't know. I think that we're still in a transitional stage with online media because the departments are smaller than, you know, it's changing. Everything's changing constantly. Well, but the Los Angeles Times, as our example, since I live in Los Angeles, has been laying off uh, lots and lots of people. And I got to tell you, uh, the problem with bad grammar, bad spelling, and factual errors, uh, that exists in newspapers, too. Don't kid yourself. Yeah, no, I understand, and I find those mistakes as well. I've been listening to you since the early 90s on all kinds of stations. I grew up with you, and I love you, and I totally, you know, I love that you're talking about all of this stuff right now because I think it's really important. I have a pile of newspapers right now in my house that I, you know, I want to throw away, and, and I'm kind of one of those people that's always... I've always read the papers, and so I'm, I, I, you know, I get online, and of course I, I realize that the news is faster. Um, but but it's it's one of those things that's hard to let go of if you're a person that normally gets your news that way. 
I mean, let me read to you from today's Los Angeles Times. Where did I get this? Did I buy a paper? No. It's in their website. Here it is. For the record, this is the corrections page. Black Pioneers, an article in Monday's Section A about firsts achieved by African Americans, and James T. Reynolds was the first black superintendent of Death Valley National Monument. Although his appointment occurred when Death Valley status was as a monument, during his tenure it became Death Valley National Park. Huh? Readers remember... A collection of reminiscences about presidents in Sunday's special inauguration section said Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected in 1931. He was elected in 1932. Garrison Keeler. An article by Garrison Keeler in Sunday's special inauguration section identified him as the host of National Public Radio's A Prairie Home Companion. The radio program is actually produced by Prairie Home Productions and distributed nationwide by American Public Media. Dilbert. The Dilbert cartoon strip intended for today's business section was inadvertently published Wednesday. Today, the strips for both days appear on page C2. <laughs> uh, okay, Tom, I get your point. That's today. I, that's today. Oh, that's that's just today. Yes, yes. I, and I know this because, like I said, I, I normally work in news media, although I'm unemployed right now. I quit my job because I was working in public television, and I was working really hard and not making, you know, enough money. And um, and uh, it's an archaic environment, so I, you know, I'm trying to like to get through that. But I'm going to throw all my newspapers away today. By the way, here's another one. This is uh, for the record. Uh, the date is January 25th, 2009. These are corrections in the future. Oh. I swear, if you go to the Times website. Yeah. They've got the corrections for January 25th. So I guess these are mistakes they're planning on making and then retracting. Um, yeah, that's pretty sad. Crossword clue. In last Sunday's Puzzler, the clue for 84 Cross was 1985 Grammy nominee. It referred to Foreigner's song, I Want to Know What Love Is, which was released in 1985, but was a Grammy nominee in two categories in 1986. Obama illustration, an illustration of Barack Obama that accompanied an essay by Rebecca Solnit last Sunday, was incorrectly credited to Zach Trenholm. It was by Jacob Thomas. Well, they're not helping themselves by having yes. mistakes like that, right? Well, I mean, everyone's getting fired at, that works for the newspaper. What I'm saying have. is, is don't assume the web has more mistakes than the, the physical paper. Right. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. I understand. And when there are mistakes on the web, it is usually because of the speed with which they get stuff online. That's true. Yeah, I agree with that. Right? I mean, uh, would you rather they kept a story for an hour to get all the spelling right? No, no. I just know it's a hard habit to break for people that are older and like, you know, like... 50-year-old people who are normally, you know, sitting there reading the paper, they just have to get with the times, you know? Step and, it up! Yeah. Adjust! All right, well, can you take me out with a bomb hit? Yes, yes, I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Ben on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. This is Ben. I know. Hey, I just I'm... said that. Oh, thank you for correcting me. Yeah, I'm a first time short time. Yes. No. <laughs> but I think it's great that um, the internet has the uh, news on it because you know it's fast paced world and it makes it more interesting. You can. Go through more information quicker. You sound well informed. Yep. And also, I uh, heard that there's uh, the internet or the cell phone companies are going together and combining to make a bigger broadband network. So you can have more of a, a personal computer as a handheld cell phone. I know they're they're going in that direction now, but I'm, I've got a smartphone in front of me. That's already been done. Oh, okay. Well. Isn't there? Well, I guess there's not as much uh, broadband coverage worldwide. That's um, that's their problem. Yeah. Do you know of any companies that are um, going on that frontier? Which uh, what? Trying to provide internet and cell phone service on the same device? Yeah, BlackBerry, uh, no, no, on, Palm, uh, worldwide. Like worldwide? Yeah, well, well, sure. I mean, look, this BlackBerry I have is called the World Edition eighty-eight thirty. 
Uh, this works in other countries. I used it in France, Italy, Spain, England. And okay. uh, it did the same things there. I was reading uh, websites from uh, back home. I was reading local websites. Uh, you, you know, you, you, uh, I have my Zagat survey uh, for Blackberry, and it had uh, restaurants in London and Paris. And I can scroll down, and when it hits the phone number, it automatically dials it on your telephone. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's sweet. Right on. Yeah, well, can you take me out with a huge bong rip? I think you've already had one today. Thank you, Tom. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Ah, yes, the Tom Likas Show. Hear us now six days every week, every Saturday from 2 until 6 p.m. And Monday through Friday from 3 until 8 p.m. Pacific time as you head home on 97.1 FM Talk. And, of course, if you can't hear us on the radio, you can always hear us at blowmeuptoms.com. I canceled my paper, and I'm here to tell you now, after being uh, without it for a while, I, I don't miss it. When you think about this, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's our telephone number. Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Steve. How you doing, buddy? Great. Good. Good. Hey, I I, I wanted to get in on this because uh, um, it, it's kind of a coincidence. Um, I have had a similar situation uh, where I have recently decided that I've had it with the L.A. Times. Um, the paper. I've always had. It's always been a just a. A habit, you know, to have the paper in my hands every morning. But you know, it's 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 gotten to the point where the paper has changed and so much. Um, there's just very graphic photographs on the front cover, you know. And for kids, I have little kids, and you know, they ask me, "What is that dead little girl on the cover of the paper?" You know, and it's you know, it, it used to be a class uh, operation, just not like that anymore. Well, I, I think the biggest problem is that uh, just that there's very little locally generated content in it. Yeah, you know, and I think they're they're going to kind of a shock uh, uh, appeal uh, just to sell. I think to sell uh, from the newsstand. Um, you know, I know subscriptions are down, but uh, um, you know, I, to go to this type of journalism, it's almost like these uh, magazines you see on these Hispanic uh, uh, newsstands. You know, just, to, you know, dead bodies as much as you can show, you know. Well, if you watch TV news in Spanish, it's far more graphic yeah, than, than yeah. what you're used to if you watch TV news in English. And, and by the way, that's because uh, the, the news media are far more graphic in many of the countries people come from that, that, that speak Spanish. Uh, when I was in uh, Costa Rica, every newspaper was like that. Every one. They were, one was more graphic and bloody than the next. Right, you know, and I think that's fine for, for them. I, I think uh, a newspaper of the caliber of Los Angeles Times, or what it used to be, uh, you know, I don't think they really have to, to to go down to that level to where they, you know, have to uh, show the blood and, and, and guts. Uh, well, they've uh, got to do something because their circulation has dropped dramatically. Exactly, and that, that's my whole point. Um, you know, I'm, I don't buy into it, and I, I, I'm going to be canceling it. And uh, whoever you know in the, in the in the house that needs to you know look at the newspaper, they can go online, including myself. There we go, Steve. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Let's say hello here to Dave on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Dave. Forever long time, and I love you. And I love your topic. This is great. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, I, I canceled my uh, my phone, uh, the landline, um, about uh, six months ago, and uh, I literally had them knocking on my door, at beg begging me to to continue my service, and I literally to where I had to kick them out. I had to kick them the hell out. I mean, the nerve. I mean, it's un it's unreal. And and they're just, you know, trying to throw all these rates at me, and I'm telling them, I don't need you. I do not need you anymore. And I'm getting very close to that point with the paper as well. I, I like to – I'm a young guy, and I still like to be somewhat traditional and open up the paper, but I cannot agree with you more about the content issue too. Yeah, I mean, um, I love opening the paper, but do I really want to pay uh, for stories that I've already read? Right. 
And that's not just stories I read on the uh, L.A. Times website. Stories I've read in the AP and UPI and Reuters. Stories that have been appearing for days. They, they might as well, because the prices are going up like crazy, they might as well have a slot where you can't even open the next page unless you put a quarter in. Tom, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how do I quarterly invite you to come out and see my band at House of Blues on Sunset tomorrow? How do I do that when I promise you there's hot 20-something girls there watching well, us? Well, talk to Dean, do Jane, I have to do? Talk to Dean. I will, okay. Dean would be the man. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. This is Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Long time, first time. How's everything? I'm doing great. Good. I got a uh, interesting... First, let me tell you I agree with you on the paper. Um, it's 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 terrible. It's pathetic. And, and it's only as reliable as even the people delivering it. Now, we're just assuming that it's getting there every day. And, and you know as well as anyone, it, it doesn't. You know, it's depending on your delivery, boy. But I have a point that I wanted to see what you thought about. How healthy do you think it is for us to be, you know, viewing two hours more of Internet each day for the rest of our lives for 50 years and how it would affect, you know, I mean, that there's a health issue there, too. Well, I don't agree with that. There are people who sit at a computer monitor eight hours a day. They're not blind. True. No, I agree. Yeah, you're right. I'm just wondering. Shoot, and and why know? would it be any worse than watching television? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Far healthier. I'm just saying, why would it be any worse for your eyes looking at a computer screen? Well, depending on the refresh rate, which is the you know the amount that it's actually flickering and strobing like a like a light, you know, in your eyes, and the and the distance away from it that you're sitting, you know, if you're re re reaching the mouse or whatnot. I mean, it's just and the chair you're in. I mean, it's just. I wonder if my grandfather, who's 85, uh, he, I mean, he just reads the paper. That's his Sunday. I'll be over there working in his yard, and he's he's not done till he reads the paper, you know. And I just wonder had he spent that whole time, his whole life online, wondering where his eyes would be. Maybe, maybe he'd be fine. Maybe. Hmm. Well, can you take me out tribal style, Tom? Yes, yes, I can. <laughs> Well, there's hardly any difference anymore between a TV monitor and a computer monitor. They're now converged. They're pretty much the same. Many people use them interchangeably. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Now I've gone for a while without a newspaper. And I wondered how I would make out, and I came here to report to you that I've done just fine. Do you still get the paper? Do you have a problem with people like me canceling the paper forever? I'm done. I'm never coming back. Never coming back. This is Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Father. Son, how are you? Uh, been better, been worse, but my complaints stop right there. Okay. <laughs> anyway, hey, you know, the Internet, in my opinion, is one of the uh, is the last bit of free speech that we have worldwide. Granted, there's some pretty gory stuff on it, and, you know, it, it's pretty unfiltered. But as far as the amount of information that you can get, it's vastly superior to anything else, and it's pretty unfiltered. You're going to get the truth the majority of the time is if you look up, you know, informational type stuff. Well, I mean, you also have the opportunity to, to get news from just about any source there is, including all of the TV networks, the newspaper publishers. They're all online. Take your pick. Absolutely. And what that leads me to my next point is I feel it's really changed an entire generation of people, the computer generation, because at the, draw, at the touch of a button, they can go anywhere and see anything any, at any part of the world. They can find a camera to check surf in Hawaii or see what the weather is in India or China. So now, the, you know, it, they don't even need to travel from right there in their computer. They can experience what they want from their home. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But, um, you know, and as far as the newspaper, it's been a long time since I've read it. You know, I'm not computer savvy, but uh, I do make sure to keep up in advance. And I, I think the Internet's a wonderful thing. And, uh, it, hey, look, it really helped Obama on his campaign. He reached out, you know, from 14 to 35-year-olds, which is one of the largest populace in our country. And granted, the 14-year-olds don't mean a thing now, but in four years, when it's time to vote again, who are they going to remember? 
Yep, very good points. Thank you for the call, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Mike in Portland, Oregon. You're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Well, hello from the other white beat state. Thank there you, you so much, yes. <laughs> well, like you, my entire family worked for the Oregonian, and I've never taken the paper. <laughs> when I was in college, I cleaned the presses. I know what linotype is. I know what linotype are. And, you know, when the... I won't say the the syndicate, but when when the Oregonian was bought out by a major news organization, uh, you know, it started being basically a soap seller and not really a news organization. I've watched lots and lots of local reporters just go by the wayside. I mean, we don't have local content anymore. It's all wire stories, and it's all the same stuff. And that's why the newspaper is getting so frustrated. They say, well, why are people choosing the Internet over the physical newspaper? Well, because a lot of what's in the newspaper now is stuff you get on the Internet. And not only do you get it on the Internet, you get it the minute it comes out. Not tomorrow right morning. After. Not the morning after tomorrow morning. You get it now. That's right. It's absolutely right. I mean, advertising is what's held everything together. And, you know, with the economy uh, going the way it is, you know, I can go on Craigslist, and uh, I used to, uh, you know, basically rent apartments. And, uh, boy, I'm telling you, the cost of putting an ad in the newspaper and the classified ads for apartments was just killing us. And then they started saying things like, well, you can't say quiet because, you know, you might be uh, you might be discriminating against uh, younger people with noisy children. And you can't say this, and you can't say that. Pretty soon, the, you know, the paper is trying to tell you how to write an ad to interest people in your apartment it's just it's just ridiculous it's it's um it's not worthwhile and i think you know readership is down and there's a perfectly good reason why i think there's more than one good reason why tom 1-800-5800-TOM tom 1-800-5800-866 the tom like his show from hollywood Tom Likas Show. I'm 1 800 5800 Tom. Well, now here I am. It's been a while since I got rid of my printed edition of the newspaper, and life is good. What do you think about that? By the way, I've been getting some very interesting uh, emails here. Here's one from Justin. Justin writes me the address, by the way, Tom at blowmeuptom.com if you'd like me to read your email. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com says here, the one thing I find more annoying and even less useful than a newspaper is a phone book. It seems everywhere I move, I get a phone book dropped off at my door every couple of months. The only time I've ever used one of these big phone books is to use as a doorstop. Who uses real phone books these days? It's so much faster looking things up online, in my opinion. I say, stop giving me these phone books. Signed, Justin. <laughs> He's right, you know. We love that Goog 411. That's the one I use. <laughs> I just love that. You ever use Goog 411? That 800... Goog, as in Google, 411. It's free 411 service. That's fantastic. Just love that. <laughs> you don't pay for it. Forget about the buck and a quarter or the buck 95, whatever they get now for directory assistance. Absolutely free. And uh, Justin is right. How often do you actually pull out the damn phone book? I've got phone books right now sitting in front of my house in a plastic bag that I've never bothered to take in. They should go right to the recycle bin. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Did I see an Obama Chia Pet, by the way? I think I did. Holy cow. All right, Francisco on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? I just wanted to say that if you want to sign when a company is doing not a good job, it's when they're using kids to sell their products. Next thing we know, they're going to bring kids from third world uh, countries to, you know, put them on TV and say, buy the newspaper, please help us, 
You know what I mean? They're, they're come all the time, knock at your door, put the sad face. Uh, and, like, they want to go trips and stuff. And now sometimes you buy the newspaper because of that. But I think, you know, if it's done, I'm, I'm waiting for them to just go out of business, period. Well, I think it's uh, they're, they're well on their way. They're well on their way to putting themselves out of business. Yeah, well, hopefully hopefully they do it just, you know, they stop doing that club no more. And, uh, and uh, you know... And if you can take me out of Bill O'Reilly, I love that, man. You're the greatest. I certainly can, Francisco. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F*** it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Uh, f***ing thing sucks. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Alan on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Father. Hello, Alan. How you doing? Do you care? No, I don't. Yo, listen, I got a story to tell you. I was applying for a college about a few months ago. There was an LA Times stand. Oh, man, they pressure you to buy newspaper. And I told the guy, hey, listen, I'm going to come later this afternoon to register. I never came back. <laughs> if I want to give my information, I go all right. Exactly right. Isn't that what everybody's doing now? Pretty much. And uh, if I want to sit out in the sun and I want to read the paper, you know what I do? I uh, I bring my laptop. That's it. That's it, brother. Thank you yeah. so much, Alan. Appreciate the call. Brad on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I got a great idea. Um, what are your thoughts on bailing out the newspaper industry? Bailing out the newspaper industry. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm just being facetious. Yes, uh, I know. Can you uh, take me out Subway style? Subway style? Of course I can. Here you go. Five. Five dollars. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Terry on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I seem to have an opinion that that is not. Uh, I disagree with you, and I understand that the internet, everything's there, and I have the internet and I use it and all that. But for me, I personally would rather pick up the newspaper and read it in different rooms in my house. I just grab it when I want it and read it. I read it all over. The, the Internet, I have to go sit down. But haven't you already read it by the time you see it in the paper? No, not me. So not you're me. telling me you never go to the ESPN website to check oh, out a score? All the time. I go to those. I go to a lot of different sites, but not every day and not all the time. But some stuff I may have, when I pick up the paper, maybe I've already seen it. But I don't like having to sit in front of my computer in the designated spot. I don't have a laptop, so maybe that would. But even if I did and I wake up in the morning and I'm laying in my bed and I'm going to read the paper, I'd rather read the paper than get my laptop, put it on my lap, Log on and, and go to wherever, whatever site it may be. How complicated is it, pal? The laptops are cheap now. What are you doing? Well, it's not, it's not complicated, but the papers is, is about as cheap as can be. And know? the information is old. Well, it, it's old. It, I, to me, when I wake up in the morning, it's new, you know? I don't know. I don't. Well, that's because you're not well informed. Well, I can't sit on the computer as often as I as, as certain people to get stuff right when it comes out. Well, what are you doing with all that time? Well, other things, Tom. Other things. Other things. <laughs> I, I went through a stretch when the internet to me became like a mainstream, and everyone was getting into getting into it, and I couldn't get away. From I remember when the internet was becoming mainstream. <laughs> But, but Way yeah, to, sit, back. to sit in front of the computer instead of reading the paper, the paper costs fifty cents. And I heard a call the other day that said he got a paper for his uh, classroom, and it went up to seventy-five cents at L.A. Times. So he stopped getting it. Actually, it's gone up to seventy-five cents. Yes, on the newsstand. Yeah, I know. So he said he stopped getting it for his class because he noticed it went up a quarter. I mean, it didn't seem like his reason was the Internet. It seemed like, well, I'm not going to pay 75 cents for this. But it's like 75 cents, Tom. 
seventy five cents. Well, what are you getting for seventy five cents? By by God, it was twenty five cents the day before yesterday. It seems. Yeah, but listen, if, even if it's getting limited, more, not as much content as it used to be, the seventy five cents. Is that enough to really say, you know what, forget it, I don't have another quarter. I have enough quarters in my change compartment in my car to, to get me the paper for a month. So <laughs> I, if I had a laptop and I really want to just always have it there and get on when I want to see stuff, you know, I, I guess I would do that. But like the, pap the paper is my main thing. The Internet, I understand, but the paper, I, I still really like getting the actual paper, the crisp smelling paper in the morning and open it up. No, it, never, it, never, it never smelled good, let me tell you. that, that <laughs> That's where I draw the line. Kevin on the Tom Likas show, hello. How are you doing today, Tom? Great. Excellent. Um, I was just on the East Coast, actually, and I took a train from Connecticut into New York early one morning to go to work in downtown New York, and it was a totally different story. Uh, it was kind of an experience actually being on the um, subway, and every single person was... Uh, on the New York Times, I could almost read the paper because one person would be on one page, the next person would be on the next page, and it seemed like nobody said one word to each other, and it was just kind of a status symbol to wear your trench coat and read your New York Times. When I was but, a kid, yeah. when I was a kid in New York, uh, if you rode the subway, yeah, you bought the New York Times, you could hide your copy of the New York Post. Yeah, exactly. And literally, people would hide copies of the tabloids inside the New York Times, so they would appear to be reading the right stuff. All the news that's fit to print, as they like to go. Nice. So it's just polar opposite from the West Coast. It seems like, you know, very rarely maybe at a bus stop you'll see somebody reading the paper. But for the most part, we're on our Blackberries and our computers. So it is definitely territorial. Kevin, thank you for that. Uh, let's say hello here to Jim on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. Jim. Hey, they're talking about still uh, talk about uh, charging by kilobyte. For everything you download, so how much is going to cost to read the paper? Well, they talk about it, but uh, I'm telling you, uh, every time someone tries to charge for something, somebody else on the Internet gives it away for free. That's why they've had such a hard time selling just about anything. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.